ultrasound of the region of the thyroid and parathyroids uh, is uh, used for diagnostic purposes, FNA of suspicious thyroid nodules and lymph nodes, and therapeutic purposes, and we'll discuss uh, today for the, mainly for the diagnostic purposes and characteristics. You all know that nowadays we have the real-time ultrasound scanner with different uh, traducers. And uh, uh, according to the 2013 um, American Institute of Ultrasound in Medicine practice guidelines uh, about the specifications of equipment uh, of parathyroid and thyroid is uh, to have the thyroid and parathyroid studies should be co conducted with a linear traducer. The equipment should be adjusted to operate at the highest clinically ap cl appropriate frequency, realizing that there is a trade-off between resolution and beam penetration. For most patients, mean frequencies of 10 or 14 or graded are preferred, but some patients may require a lower frequency traducer for depth penetration. The trade-off of the depth penetration is for the superficial lesions, the high frequency, and the low frequency for the deep, and the resolution is uh, according to the same. So always we must have in mind, uh, if the gland is deep or extremely enlarged, a curved linear traducer may be necessary, and the resolution should be a suffi of sufficient quality to evaluate the eternal morphology and visible lesions, as we'll discuss later. Beside traducers, um, Important is the Doppler frequencies which we should be set to optimize flow de detection. And there, furthermore, which is not in the guidelines of 2013, but is going to be is promising, is uh, an appropriate software of elastography can be used as an additional tool for the evaluation of thyroid lesions. In addition, a uh, shear wave elastography is a quantitative method to measure tissue hardness is better than the previous, but prelimin preliminary studies appear promising, but further studies remain necessary. Now, what are the ultrasound examination of uh, uh, indications for thyroid examination? Is to evaluate the location and characteristics of a palpable neck masses, including an enlarged thyroid, the present size, location of thyroid gland, the laboratory abnormalities, if we have abnormalities, we, we proceed to ultrasound examination. Abnormalities detected uh, by other imaging examinations, by, by chance on a CT scan, MR examination. The follow-up imaging of previously detected thyroid nodules, when indicated, of course, and patients at high risk of an occult thyroid malignancy. Important is about thyroidectomy, where we must have the evaluation of regional nodal metastasis in the patients with proven or suspected thyroid carcinoma, the thyroid gland for suspicious nodules before neck surgery of a non-thyroid disease as a, a survey, the evaluation of recurrent disease of regional nodal metastasis, metastasis after total or partial thyroidectomy for thyroid carcinoma, the follow-up means, and the thyroid gland for suspicious nodules before radionuclein iodine ablation of the gland, as you know more than me. Now, the thyroid examination, you all know that is uh, uh, always uh, performed with the, next, the neck in hyperextension. It always must, the right and the left lobes of the thyroid gland should be imaged in the longitudinal and transverse uh, plans. Always the size of each thyroid should be recorded in three dimensions the anteroposterior, the transverse, and longitudinal. Always must be recorded, the recorded images of the thyroid nodule include the transverse images of the superior, mid, and inferior portions of the uh, thyroid, and um, uh, in, of the right and left thyroid lobes, the longitudinal images in the middle, mid, and lateral portions of both sides, and at least the transverse image of isthmus, even one image must be recorded. And um, many times is the only thing that uh, at least uh, with just one image, you can see if there is a thyroid enlargement. The thickness, anteroposterior measurement of the isthmus, this, on the transverse should be recorded. 
A color or power Doppler examination can be used to supplement the grayscale evaluation of either diffuse or focal abnormalities of the thyroid, as we will see later. So, the examination scanning fields is uh, the central <coughs> neck from the lower border of the mandible uh, to the sternal notch and the bilateral cervical node chains and often necessary to extend imaging to include the soft tissue the con um, above for congenital abnormalities and or if any superior palpable abnormality is noted. How, how is the normal appearing of the thyroid? It's like this. As we can see, uh, I will try uh, to see the normal uh, echogenicity, the trachea, the esophagus. Uh, about um, always, the normal appearance should be uh, like in this image, which is a little bit hyperitense, not um, like the previous one. And we can see again the trachea, the carotid, uh, the right and the left side always must be recorded, uh, and the muscles, the uh, glimadomastoid and longus colis muscle. And um, about the measurements, is another one with the uh, imaging, and the anatomy has already been set today. Uh, so about the measurements, uh, we must uh, measure the longitudinal from the one part to the other, and the transverse, anteroposterior, and right to left, which are a range of uh, uh, sizes, is 1.5 uh, to 1.5 to 2, and the longitudinal three to four centimeters. And uh, what is the documentation, how it can be, how it must be about, uh, with the uh, practice guidelines uh, 2013? Uh, the examination report. It must be adequate. Documentation is essential for high quality patient care. So the images should be labeled with the patient identification, facility identification, examination day, and the side, the right, left, of the anatomic side imaging. Images of all appropriate areas, both normal and abnormal, should be recorded. Variations of normal size should be accompanied by measurements. An official interpretation, the final report, of ultrasound findings should be included in the patient's medical record. Retention of ultrasound examination should be consistent both with clinical needs and with relevant legal or local health care facility requirements. The new but promising uh, for all of us, the imaging um, persons uh, as scientists, mm -hmm. is uh, that um, on October 2014, uh, it was a proposal uh, of the UMS, the radiology section of UMS, to the UMS, uh, UMS is uh, the European Medical Specialist uh, Europe, in Europe, uh, who decide about every recommendation, uh, so it was a proposal about the medical records that should be kept at least um, five of ten years in every uh, private uh, medical center or uh, laboratory or any um, uh, hospital, and um, the necessity to renew all equipment every ten years, even at least to update this. So the next year is going to be the upcoming um, guidelines. So we are moving now to the thyroid abnormalities. Uh, should be imaged in a way that allows for reporting and documentation of the location, as I said before, the size, number, and character of significant abnormalities, including measurements of nodules and focal abnormalities in three dimensions, the localized or diffuse nature of any thyroid abnormality, and the sonographic features of any thyroid abnormality with respect to echogenicity, composition, means to the degree of cystic change, the margins, if it is smooth or irregular, the presence and type of calcification, if present, of course, and other rele relevant sonographic patterns, peripheral vascularity and color Doppler, and the presence, of course, and the size of abnormal lymph node in the, uh, in the lateral compartment of the net, in the regional lymph nodes. The uh, for this example is, um, to see where there are uh, a lot of uh, nodules and in the longitudinal. So uh, uh, somebody for the records must measure them, find the outlines, and keep in, uh, in details. And like here, 
there is a diffuse abnormality, it's a transverse uh, grayscale uh, ultrasonography, um, where we see diffuse um, and large uh, thyroid uh, nodule and, and irregularity. Um, and the other one, where we see uh, the Doppler imaging, power Doppler imaging. This, we see marked hypoechoic solid lesion in the, with the surrounded um, a normal uh, thyroid tissue. And the other one, which is, uh, we see here that there isn't any acoustic shouting or the intense uh, enhancement, as we say, uh, for the cysts, like here, that we have this, and we see the solid part at the periphery. These are the things that we account for, or um, an isotens, too high peritens um, lesion with a surround halo, high potence halo, and the other one with irregularity. Mixed density um, nodule with a cystic uh, center, halo periphery, and um, effacement outlines. And the next is like the previous one. I'm not going to have the in time, and I'm moving to the difficult parts and the um, uh, texture of uh, microcalcifications, which uh, the most of the times means uh, uh, malignancy, but we have to differentiate like this, which is marked and, and means benign, instead of microcalcifications, irregular, or where are they located uh, to have the signs of uh, malignancy and the power top Doppler. As I said before, there is a lesion. We put the power Doppler. We see that the, the vascularity is around the lesion, and the most uh, in ma main important thing is to have a center vascularity. Uh, that means malignancy again, and uh, we must be uh, very careful that if we see the lesion in longitudinal, perhaps you, you believe that this in the, in the center, uh, central, but it's not because you must see this in three dimensions. The same, the last or dot list, um, the mixed density, the power Doppler that um, uh, helps us to see the vascularity, and the next lesion with the irregular cystic center and different uh, vascularity, as we we'll discuss later. Now, very important is to um, assess if there are any regional lymph nodes, um, if there are, in fact, um, uh, not normal because it's not the size uh, to be, if it is big, to be abnormal and infiltrated, but um, just how to see the morphology, the outlines, and how is the uh, vascularity, if it is in the portal, as we know, and the shape, if it is uh, the regular size, even if it is uh, enlarged. Like here, where we see this is an oval shape, it's not the regular, it's like uh, a round shape with um, uh, marked vascularity and inside and outside with a, not the normal shape. So this is an infiltrate a malignant lymph node. What about US elastography? As I said before, it's promising but not uh, in the guidelines. It has been introduced to uh, objectively evaluate tissue stiffness or heartless. US elastography has been developed based in the assumption that the Hartle nodule is more likely malignant than soft nodule, in the hope of this technique to be used uh, in order to reduce the necessary biopsies and FNAs or surgery. Although many studies reported that elastography is useful for differentiation of malignant from benign nodules using strain images on, re on straight ratio, the inter-observer agreement is still limited, and much work needs to be done for technical development and standardization. 
the technique is based on the relative compressively uh, to, the, to the pressure applied by the probe on carotid pulsation, which is difficult to keep constant. This eventually influences both the elasticity image and thyroid strain index. More recently, introduced shear wave elastography is an operated independent, reproducible, and quantitative method to measure tissue hardness. Preliminary studies appear promising, but further studies remain necessary. Some images with elastography, uh, as we can see the lesion, and uh, we can estimate about the color mapping. Now we are moving to the um, thyroid diseases, uh, starting from the developmental disease, uh, like thyroglossal duct cyst. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to concentrate to this because you are uh, going to have a lecture, a special mm -hmm. lecture tomorrow. But uh, I, I want to emphasize that cysts may demonstrate increased heterogeneity secondary to proteinaceous content of ultrasound, uh, like here where we see a complete cyst because we have the shadow, the intense enhancement is in the central. And the next one we see is hypotense. It's not purely cyst, uh, but uh, because it has the proteinaceous uh, tissue. And it is in the anatomical, three anatomical usually uh, positions that we can find above the isthmus. The ectopic thyroid gland uh, which is, um, be, can be found uh, everywhere in the central neck compartment, including the esophagus, trachea, and arterial mediastinum. The lingual thyroid is the most common and accounts 90% of ectopic thyroid. Imaging is performed to demonstrate absent thyroid tissue in the normal location, which in most cases is often associated with hypothyroidism. So when we don't have, we can look from this side and we can see the, the ectopic uh, thyroid. And then diffuse coiter, which uh, in here, as I said before, is the uh, cases that we must uh, use all, not only the linear transducer, but the curvy linear with lower megahertz in order to demonstrate um, this big lesion. And uh, you see, e even in the longitudinal, we cannot, the oblique and the transverse, we, we couldn't in one image uh, to demonstrate the whole of it and because, as you can see, a very good demonstration with the CT scan. And moving on to the diffuse diseases. Diffuse diseases include those that are of functional alteration and those with abnormal size and shape. Radiologic image studies are rarely indicated or for diffuse thyroid disease except of thyroiditis. Characteristic findings is ill-defined hypo or markedly hypoechoic focal area with little or no vascular flow on color Doppler imaging. As here, it's not good, but we, um, it's a little bit dark, but you can see that it's a, the abnormality and the hypotense uh, appearance. This is a region, le, uh, re, uh, reason that is very dark. And uh, here with the Doppler, you can see that too much dop, um, color a flow in them, taking technically the too much color in order to see that you can see is very low uh, vascularization, hypotense, and here is um, over needing a very small left thyroid gland. And here is another case that we can see the hypotense is a uh, is, uh, thyroiditis. We can see in the center, it is a grayscale transverse image, uh, the trachea, carotid, and the thyroid, and we can see the diffuse, uh, the, the one uh, local hypotense lesion, and in the longitudinal, the hypotense lesion, and here in one month follow-up st uh, follow study, we can see uh, that it, it was reduced, it was thyroid The next one, which could be um, Hajimoto or Graves thyroid, this, we can see the whole enlargement, but as I said in the beginning, only with this, if we can see with a transverse image that the, um, the isthmus is uh, more than 0 0.5 centimeters, and this is huge, is 1.5, and the regularity um, 
means to be thyroiditis. Even it is not so uh, high potency and diffuse. The thyroidist nodules is the most important for this uh, presentation because it's the most frequent performed examination of thyroid lesions and plays a bivotal role in the diagnosis and management of benign and malignant thyroid nodules. And ultrasound allows uh, characterization of thyroid nodules, detection of, the, of cervical lymphadenopathy, as we said before, guidance for FNA, as well as percutaneous intervention, such as ethanol, it was before. Now is more getting more place the radiofrequency application of um, benign uh, nodules of the thyroid or before it was using the laser application. The nodular diseases are characterized by the disastrous growth of thyroid cells in uh, nodular disease. The previous studies have demonstrated that thyroid nodules are found in, in this amount of uh, uh, population and palpation, and malignancies have found to be only in 9% to 50% of the nodules that were evaluated by FNS biopsy. F, uh, final needle aspiration biopsy. There are, were many studies to find the risk factors of uh, thyroid cancer when we see some nodules, including the most um, uh, to be acceptable, but not at least uh, and um, for sure, are the history of head and neck radiation, uh, irradiation, the age below 20 and more than 60 years old, increased nodule size four than centimeter and still increasing size, new or large neck mass, the male gender is more than women, family history of thyroid cancer or multiple endocrineoplasia type two, uh, vocal cord paralysis or hoarse voice, clinical signs, nodule fixed to adjustment structure, uh, structures, and suspected leaf not involving. And uh, what we can do to find and differentiate the benign from malignant nodules? The ultrasound features can provide information about the malignant potential of thyroid nodules, including and concentrating to the eternal contents, the shapes, the margins, the echogenicity, and the calcifications. And most of purely cystic nodules are considered to as hyperplastic nodules, leaving colloid field seeds. So we must understand how to, um, to understand which are the uh, um, colloid filling cysts. And echogenic foci with common tail are found within the cystic cavities. I will see, we'll see pictures later. From concentrated col colloidal content, suggesting benign lesions. So can somebody differentiate them? With a meta-analysis for many, all, all these studies and more, um, was concentrated to the um, these findings, as uh, we said before, the calcifications, the organicity, margins, solid lesion, the eternal vascularization, mm -hmm. and they found the percentage of the, each one, uh, the sensitivity, specificity, specificity, the positive predictive value, and the negative predictive value for a malignancy. So, some just images uh, to see how is the normal and the benign, which is similar to the others, we can see here um, a, a pure uh, cyst with colloid, which has, which has typical the enhanced intense the, um, acoustic shadow, as we said, in radiology. And so is smooth height lines, outlines, mark high potence, is a cyst. And here, as we see, is normal again, is benign again, because is this the tail, as we described before, because of the content and fluid of the color seeds in, in, the, in the context of the cyst, so we can see this like a tail, but it's normal and benign. And this in the solid uh, part, which is, um, to see the, here, is um, a, a, like it's a spongoid thing. You, you can see that somebody must be, his irregularity is benign. And here we have in, uh, the other part, the malignant signs. One most important is just the measurement is, if it is the, the, the high instead to width, is more the high instead of this, is malignancy. But it has also a high potency appearance and irregularity. And the other one here is a cystic lesion, 
It has, is not a cystic because it's not had enhancement here, so we must be very careful to understand which is cystic or not. But it's too much hypotense, since we can see from the uh, adjacent muscle, and we can see even uh, small calcifications and the solid part. And the other one, uh, which has um, ill-defined context in the um, medial part. All these are, mal are malignant uh, images. There are a lot of uh, findings, but because of the lack of the time, I cannot uh, speak of all these uh, um, written in with the percentage of the positive value or of the negative uh, in every each um, uh, thing that we I show already with the um, uh, images. And uh, all these are concentrated for many centers uh, to a practical approach to thyroid nodules, like this one uh, with, um, uh, from uh, Mayo Clinic, Rochester, where is the, um, uh, tend to rather to be benign, intermediate, and the other rather to be malignant. So we can different, um, uh, have the part which are we going to ask for um, uh, fine needle aspiration. Now we are moving to my uh, part, the parathyroids. Primary hyperparathyroidism accounts of, for most hyperparathyroidism cases results from the excessive release of parathyroid hormone, PTH, and manifest as hypercalcemia. Patients with hypercalcemia who have normal renal function and no malignancy must be suspect, suspected for, for of having primary hyperparathyroidism and must be subsequently tested for elevated PTH levels. Hyperparathyroidism is often incidentally discovered during routine laboratory testing when hypercalcemia is noted. And uh, this is just to say when normal, high or low, just to concentrate with the uh, values of uh, PTH and, and uh, calcium uh, to decide uh, when to proceed to um, ultrasound examination of primary, to find uh, no, uh, adenomas or in primary hyperparathyroidism. The pathologic lesions of uh, PHPT include a solitary adenoma in the most of the cases, uh, which is uh, up to 80%, 25%. Uh, and the multinodular disease is uh, lower than the numbers. Nowadays, is lower than the numbers even written here, 15 to 20 percent. And the carcinoma is about 1 to 2 percent. Multinodular disease of parathyroid are due to hyperplasia of all parathyroid glands or occasionally double adenoma. In some cases, we found three adenomas, and this included the hi uh, primary hyperplasia. So which are the indications uh, to do an examination, ultrasound examination for parathyroids? It's uh, not limited to this, but actually is for this only to this reason, to identification and localization of parathyroid abnormalities in patients with known or suspected hyperparathyroidism. And, and again, and uh, of course in add to this, Assessment of the number and size of a large parathyroid glands in patients who have undergone previous parathyroid surgery or applied therapy with the recurrent symptoms of hyperparathyroidism. So we tried to find what is was remaining or if we didn't take the one which could be to take out. How is the parathyroid examination? The examination should be performed with the neck hyperthyroid and again, like thyroid. It should include, include longitudinal and transverse images from the carotid arteries to the midline bilaterally, uh, and extending from the carotid bifurcation. I don't have, I think I have another, um, from the carotid bifurcation up to the aortic, um, as we see below, um, in the thoracic inlet inferiorly, and uh, we must always think in mind to have to a curvilinear and linear transducer. As parathyroid glands may be hidden below the clavicles, 
in the lower neck and upper mediastinum, it may also be helpful to have the patient show low at the time during the examination with constant real-time real observation. Rarely, parathyroid adenomas may also be intrathyroidal in few cases. Although the normal parathyroid glands are usually not visualized uh, with available sonographic technology, and large parathyroid glands may be visualized. When uh, they are seen in their location, size, and number should be documented, and measurements should be made in three dimensions again. The relationship of any visualized parathyroid glands to thyroid gland should be documented, if applicable, to have the uh, where it is, the relationship between them, because it's very important uh, for the surgeons when they are going to, uh, for surgical excision. Color and power, uh, power or spectra Doppler ultrasound may be helpful. The upper mediastinum may be imaged with an appropriate probe, as I said before, by angling under the sternum from the sternal lodge. We can see it with in the um, workshop. So, the common causes of false positive or false negative studies for ultrasound are thyroid nodules or reactive leaf nodes because they have the same appearance. And if they are in the positions that we usually see um, a nodule of thyroid nodule here, instead of seeing the location, the usual location of the inferior parathyroid, we can confuse them. Uh, ultrasound also fails to demonstrate retrosternal or mediastinal parathyroid lesions, so we move on other examinations. Parathyroid carcinoma is a rare malignant uh, neoplasm derived uh, from the parenchymal cells of the parathyroid glands. As with other endocrine malignancies, it is difficult to differentiate parathyroid carcinomas from adenomas only by image features. Although three is a great overlap, parathyroid carcinomas tend to be larger with an average size of three centimeters. The only reliable imaging features of malignancy are the invasion of the surrounding structures. Oh. Parathyroid rhyonuclease scan, SESTAMIPI, as you all know, and ultrasound are the mostly commonly used techniques for the location of hyperfunctioning parathyroid tissue. Ultrasound has the advantage of demonstrating the anatomy relationship of the enlarged parathyroid gland, either adenoma or hyperplastic tissue, with surrounding structures in the neck. Ultrasound allows abnormal parathyroid gland as an oval, beam shape, or infrequently multilopulated hypoechoic mass, posterior or inferior to the thyroid gland usually inferior. In addition to hypogenicity and lead location, color or bio power Doppler ultrasound is helpful to demonstrate the characteristic, characteristic extrathyroidal feeding artery, usually branching off from the inferior thyroidal artery and entering to one of the poles. Partly or completely cystic parathyroid adenoma from cystic degeneration is rarely reported in an approximately 2% of patients. So, the reported sensitivities for the dissection of single parathyroid adenomas with cestamipi scan and ultrasound are comparable with each other. Many studies were reported for this with ranges of, uh, for cestamipi, 68 to 95% and for ultrasound, 72 to 89%. The sensitivities become especially low with multinodular disease. A recent meta-analysis performed by Ruta et al. Uh, shown the respective mean sensitives for hyperplasia and double adenoma were only 44 and 30 percent for cestamipi scan and less 35 to 16 percent for ultrasound compared to 88 percent and 79 for single adenoma respectively. An accepted a preoperative approach that combines both cestamipi uh, scan and ultrasound is more accurate uh, uh, than either technique alone. This is usually performed in our department as well. Uh, so like this, this is a typical, is a thyroid gland, the posteriorly and inferior um, parathyroid adenoma. And here we have um, uh, the longitudinal scan and, tram scan and the transverse where we see um, the hypodense uh, oval shape usually the parathyroid adenoma, 
and here with the isotope scan and the, with power Doppler. Usually unusual cases, which uh, could be an undescended parathyroid adenoma, as we can see here, where is the undescended right inferior parathyroid adenoma, and um, we can find it in the submandibular gland, near the submandibular. So in Ecosia General Hospital, we have a study for three years, a series of, we studied uh, more than 100 patients with primary hyperparathyroidism, operated with minimally invasive parathyroidectomy in three year time in our center, and we are preoperatively assessed using combined modality imaging. If we had a neck ultrasonography and systemic scintigraphy. We are always performed in every case preoperatively in all patients. And, when, and with MR imaging in selected cases, where, where it was disagreement of the two imaging modality cases, the scintigraphy or the ultrasound. And the results is uh, like this, and the conclusion was the combination of neck ultrasonography, system EP scintigraphy, and rarely MR imaging for the identification of all parathyroid glands and localization prior to surgery aid and the use of uh, minimal uh, uh, parathyroidectomy in the majority of primary hyperparathyroidism cases performed in our center. And last, the summary of all above. Ultrasound imagery plays an immense role in the diagnosis and management of parathyroid and thyroid disease, especially in triage of thyroid nodule. Ultrasound elastography, US uh, guided FNA, and molecular market studies are all currently under active research topics to improve the uh, diagnostic ability of image modalities in differentiating benign from malignant nodules, which can eventually reduce unnecessary biopsy and uh, surgery. Systemipi scan and ultrasound have similar diagnostic accuracy to localize fiberfaction in parathyroid tissue, although the accuracy is suboptimal for submandicular disease or recurrent disease. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>